Hello friends, it is 7.08 a.m. Sunday, September 19th, 2021, and it is the one year anniversary of my YouTube channel. So I am filming this special video here. Um, the plan is I'm going to walk on the Lady Bird Lake Trail, aka Royan Ann Butler Hike and Bike Trail in Austin, Texas, and do some narration talking about where I'm walking, some of my memories around this area since I've lived in Austin, and also talk about my YouTube channel, where it's come over the last year and where I hope to see it go in the future. So let's get started. I am in uh, Riverside right now, um, which is just west of I-35. You can see the I-35 bridge crossing Lady Bird Lake Trail up ahead. And I'm going to start walking in that direction um, to the west. Uh, so I actually live close to this neighborhood here and I can walk to it so I come here pretty often. It's a really nice area and I'm really glad to live so close to Lee because uh, this trail is beautiful. I come here and bike all the time. Um, one of my favorite parts of Austin altogether is this trail. So um, you can actually go through my YouTube channel and see I have a few videos uh, walking on this trail, biking on this trail. And it's just, it's just very nice, so, yeah. Um, as I said, it is a little past 7 a.m., which is pretty early for me, um, to be honest. I usually get up about right now. Today I got up at around 6.30 because I knew I wanted to come out and film this YouTube video, but it is going to be very hot today. So I didn't want to be doing this out in the afternoon when it's like up in the high 90s. Right now it is, let me actually check what the exact temperature is. Um, looks like it is 73 degrees Fahrenheit outside. Not bad at all. It'll probably start getting warm here in a moment. We're about to see the sunrise in a few minutes. So I'm not sure exactly what my plan is for this walk. There's a few things I could do. Um, I'm thinking I'm going to walk all the way down to um, Auditorium Shores, go past Congress Avenue and um, to the Fluger Pedestrian Bridge and cross over to the other side of the lake and head back that way. Um, I could also just keep on going west all the way to Zilker Park and then loop around or just walk <laughs> the whole trail until my camera dies and then see where we want to go from there. We'll probably just feel it out as we go. So I'm not actually sure how long it's going to take to get all the way to the Fluger Bridge. It'll be a fun little experiment. I've done this walk before and recorded it, so I could have just gone and referenced and saw how long it took me before. But this will be a fun adventure for all of us. You can see these palms here supported by these wooden beams, which I am guessing is because of the winter storm this past winter that killed so many palm trees in Austin. You're all good. It's kind of a sad looking palm tree here. <laughs> Still getting used to the kind of uh, talking to myself aspect of when I do these narrated videos. Um, 
Yeah, just to kind of talk about, uh, you know, this milestone going one year, um, posting YouTube videos. Uh, you may have watched, I did a 100 subscriber special back at the end of June uh, when I reached that milestone. And today I am just over 200 subscribers. So just two and a half months later, I was able to, you know, double my subscribers, um, which it took me like... I don't know, like eight months to get to a hundred in the first place. So that's pretty nice. Um, I want to aim even higher than that and get to a thousand in the next next several months. See if we can make that happen. If you're someone who watches my videos regularly, please leave me a comment for sure. Let me know. Um, I know most of the people who watch my videos are just looking for one specific thing um so they're not actually subscribed to my channel and they're just interested in seeing a video walking around um you know university of texas at austin or um walking in campus town in champaign urbana and not really wanting to see like three hour long walks a week of some random place that i'm exploring But aside from that, in the last year, I have posted over a hundred videos. I think it's going to be a hundred and five, maybe a hundred and six by the time this one goes up. Uh, so today is September 19th, which is the anniversary of the creation of the actual channel. I intend on uploading this on September 24th, which will be the one year anniversary of my first post on this YouTube channel which was me aimlessly walking around Urbana, Illinois. It was very low quality because I had just gotten my GoPro that day. And that was the first time I had used it. I was really excited about it. I didn't really know the settings or how to, um, you know, work the GoPro and make it look nice so it does not look nice. <laughs> but that was, uh, you know, just me being super excited, wanting to get out there and start recording some content. I told this story a little bit on my 100 subscriber video, but I'll talk about it again, how I kind of got inspired to start doing this. Um, a little over a year ago, uh, right before the pandemic started actually, or around the beginning of the pandemic, I broke my leg, which sucked, <laughs> and I ended up moving in with my parents and was on crutches and really could barely even get up for a while because it was so painful to, um, you know, not just be laying down. And it sucked because I, you know, have always loved getting outside and walking and biking and exploring and that's something I just could not do. Um, not to mention the fact that it was the middle of a, Pissing me off. Um, a terrible, pandemic that was so scary for everyone at the time because it was so early on um but uh i ended up discovering on youtube these videos of people who just make content walking around different places walking around new york city japan france and i could watch these videos and kind of escape from reality and be like wow look at me i am <laughs> looking at this random neighborhood in Tokyo and I don't know I I find that stuff like really interesting um and I I used to do that like years ago too like I would watch like train videos of um like places in Japan and Europe and think it's really interesting <laughs> but I really started like actually watching a lot then and I also would watch videos of places I'd lived before um, and get nostalgic about that, and yeah, I I came to appreciate this art form. <laughs> uh, so fast forward then from that was like in uh, April May. I continued on even after I got off crutches, could start walking again, and up until September where I finally decided, okay, this is something I want to start doing. I can make these videos myself of where I live, and then I'll have my own content to look back at and be nostalgic for. 
And I did that. And here we are one year later in Austin, Texas, still making videos. Some of the channels that inspired me um, as like, you know, content creators that I used to watch regularly, still watch their videos. Um, one is Nomadic Ambience, who I would definitely recommend checking out. Um, he has some like super high quality, beautiful videos. Um, and he also does a lot of like ASMR type content, like where he'll just, um, you know, record a beach and get like beautiful beach sounds and record like cityscape soundscapes in the evening like stuff to help people fall asleep I guess and then he'll also do like walking videos of really cool places he travels the world regularly and um, a lot of his contents like walking in the rain so it's like the sound is a big part of it as well but he also does beautiful color grading and editing that I would love to learn how to do just to make my videos look really cool because I right now do very minimal editing um, usually I don't even like edit the visual part of the video at all I just um, put it in and cut it where I want to cut it put the audio over and that's it very minimal effort I'm right now definitely much more um, prioritizing quantity <laughs> over quality in terms of my videos on this channel I would love to have more good videos than fewer excellent videos, if that makes sense. Um, but I would love, you know, greater um, editing and video techniques, because right now I know like the bare minimum of how to make my videos look good. But yeah, I definitely recommend checking out Nomadic Ambience if you're into this kind of content. I mean, if you're into it and you're watching this, Chances are you might have already seen it anyway. Uh, but yeah, all of his videos are unnarrated as well. It's just like taking in the sounds and sights of the cool places he goes to. Uh, so there's that. Another one is Action Kid, who is very popular as well. He's based in New York City and does like tons and tons of videos. I was just looking at it the other day when I was looking to see how many videos I've uploaded in the last year, uh, which is just over a hundred. He's uploaded like 3,000 something videos, and I don't know, like, maybe he's been doing this like six or seven years, and that's insane. <laughs> and he has like a big following, he like talks over all his videos, he's like a New Yorker who's lived there his whole life and can like talk about the neighborhoods and has a lot of interesting insight to share on there um, and he's got a big following so there's like live streams and people tune in and watch and interact uh, with him as he's filming it which I think is really cool and honestly I would love to um, live stream and walk one day and get into that as well just because that seems like a fun interactive way to be doing this We'll see. I did mention um, back in Chicago when I did my 100 subscriber special that I wanted to start making more videos where I would talk over and narrate as I walk. And I did start filming some videos like that in Chicago, but it just got to a point where I <laughs> just could not stand the sound of my own voice as I was walking. I'm like, damn, this is just going to ruin this video for me when I watch it back in the future because... I'm just cringing at myself talking. Hopefully it's not so bad right now. <laughs> um, because I, I still feel that way. Like I want to make more videos like that so I could transition into talking and narrating, live streaming. I think I just need to practice more. I'll we'll get to that point. Uh, but yeah, that's why I kind of dropped off of that <laughs> basically immediately after I said I was going to start doing that in Chicago. Also, I was only in Chicago for like less than three months. There's a lot of stuff I wanted to hit and I really didn't know anything about the places I was going because I've never really lived in Chicago. I don't really know much about the history or the neighborhoods. So I was better off just keeping my mouth shut and 
enjoying the natural sounds of the city. Uh, right now we're walking under I-35. It's pretty cool. There's like a little ramp up there that goes up to uh, Riverside where it intersects with uh, I-35 or goes over I-35 right now. Not sure how well that's showing up, but you can start to see the sunrise back there to the east. Yeah, uh, like I was saying, Action Kid is a big inspiration for this channel. Um, would recommend checking him out if you're into those kinds of narrated walks we're actually getting some cool facts and um, insight into the places you're watching being walked around um, similar to that there's a youtuber called Johnny Strides who does uh, basically the same thing in Toronto Canada and I like his videos as well I've never been to Toronto or Canada at all in my life um, so it's interesting seeing someone talk about a place like that. <laughs> Get to experience it without actually visiting. Okay, the sky looks beautiful right now. I'm rarely up early enough to see the sunset, I mean sunrise. Uh, usually getting up like right around now. It's like... 7.26 a.m. So I'm hoping it's coming through well on the video. The sky looks awesome. You got a little guy rowing on a kayak over here. I think that's a kayak. Is that what you call that kind of boat? It's a very skinny kayak, <laughs> if it is that. That's awesome. Um, I'm sure later in the day there's going to be tons of people out here on the lake because it is the weekend, um, although it is going to be super hot today. But the nice thing about being out on the water is you can just jump right in and cool off. So, yeah. Right across here, uh, we have the Rainy Street District, which is um, a big upcoming neighborhood in Austin that um, already has like a giant knife life scene, lots of cool live music venues and bars and food trucks, and it's a great place to go on the weekend if you're um, trying to go out and experience nightlife in Austin. You can see this building there, building right here up um, in front of the really tall one has like grown a lot. <laughs> I just got back here from Chicago a couple of weeks ago and that building was not nearly as tall. So it's kind of um, making a big impact on the skyline, especially looking at it from the east where I live. I'm not sure what the building's called actually. It looks like it's going to be a residential building, which most of those... Um, taller buildings over in that neighborhood are so if we do end up crossing the Fluger Bridge and going around that way on that side of the lake I might just walk through there we can check out the Rainy Street District
there's always tons of people running and biking on this trail um lots of joggers lots of people in austin are super um into fitness and that's very inspiring for me because i don't work out super regularly i you know obviously i'm pretty active i walk and bike a lot but i don't really make an intentional effort to uh be fit or exercise aside from that but i'd like to and um like i said lots of people in austin are super into going to the gym into yoga jogging So it's definitely helpful and like, you know, there's so many beautiful places outside in Austin to go run or do yoga. There's also like these like um, outdoor workout stations along the trail. I, you might have seen the one like at the, the dock where I started this video. There's one right there um, for doing like calisthenics type stuff. Um, yeah. A lot of encouragement to get outside and be healthy, for sure, compared to other places I've lived. This part of the trail we're entering right now is one of my favorite parts um, because there is so much uh, lush greenery all around. There's so many trees and it forms a canopy over the trail. It looks beautiful. Um, like you really feel like you're walking through a little forest right here. And, and that's that's the great thing about a lot of places in Austin is there is so much greenery, so many trees, and uh, the city really values having a lot of park space, also a lot of like wildlife reserve areas. Most of the trail is not lit up at night, which is annoying for me when I'm trying to get around um, because the trail is a great way to get around on bike, but if it's past... Uh, the sunset it's pitch black on most of the trail except for these like um boardwalk type areas they all have lights that come out of the railing right there so those are totally um you know well lit at night but i think that the reason that they don't light up most of the trail is for the wildlife to keep it um as a sanctuary for the the critters that live along the coast of lady bird lake here and that's probably a positive thing even though I would like to be able to ride on the trail without it being super sketchy at night. <laughs> right. The sun has fully risen. <laughs> Very bright out there. Awesome. We're about... 24 minutes in, we've come a good distance so far. Right now on the left, we're passing a place called the Cidercade which I've never visited actually, but I pass by all the time on this trail and it's a, a bar where you can play arcade games and also they have like tons of cider on tap. So you go in and you, you play, pay like a flat fee to play all the games there and you can just uh, get cider and hang out with your friends. Looks like a lot of fun. They've got this little um, outdoor area as well. It's right by the lake. so. Pretty nice. Hopefully I'll actually go in person and check it out one day. There are so many amazing 
bars and cafes and like clubs in Austin you could literally never visit every single one of them <laughs> and I think that's awesome and I've I've visited like less than 10 of them <laughs> in the time I've lived here because most of the time I've been here has been in the middle of the pandemic while I'm unvaccinated so was not getting out and partying so much at that time <laughs> but um I mean, things still aren't great with COVID at the moment, but I am vaccinated and I am young and healthy, so I do feel fine about um, going out and experiencing things in person like that, especially since I live alone and I work from home. I don't have uh, as much risk of exposing other people who are, um, you know, not willing to be around me. <laughs> So yeah, hopefully I get out and explore some of the more um, indoor areas of Austin <laughs> that I haven't really done so much since I've been here. It was definitely interesting. I moved here in December, um, so it's interesting to see the city kind of come back to life when I had never seen it pre-COVID. And uh, it's definitely... Um, it seems like a post-COVID world in many ways. Like when you go out to 6th Street at night, see like a giant crowd of people milling in and out of all the bars there. So right here is the end of this kind of boardwalk part of the hike and bike trail, which was actually built relatively recently. I'm not sure when exactly, but definitely in the last uh, five or six years, I think they put up this part of the trail that goes out onto the lake. Um, so before I moved here, uh, but it's really nice. I'm glad it's here, but the rest of the trail um, is just on the land by the lake for the most part. Actually, look at a little map right here. See how far we've come. So we're right here. You can see most of downtown is in this area. And we started all the way down here. Boardwalk trailhead right there. So we've come a good distance, but you can kind of see... It's, it's a long trail. Probably not going to walk the whole thing this morning. <laughs> um, I'll probably continue on this way past Congress Avenue, Auditorium Shores, then go up the Fluger Bridge and go from there. Yeah. These apartments right here by the trail. Must be very expensive, but um, I'm sure it's really nice to live right here in this location. I would love it just to be able to come 
right down to the lake directly. You see these buildings right ahead. The apartments come really right up to the trail. So you got people walking and biking right in your backyard, which is interesting. I, I think like if you're an exhibitionist type person, that's definitely a great place for you to be. And I actually go by here and see people in their little patios right there with your guitars and um, other instruments singing and playing for the people who are coming by so that's awesome <laughs> but also I don't know if I would like to have an apartment literally right here with uh, so many people passing by at all hours of the day it's pretty cool wonder what, why this guy is spraying the tray like this <laughs> Gotta keep Austin wet. Don't know if you saw the little black dog right there as I was passing by. I wanted to get him on this video because he's always out there sitting. And I don't know, I like <laughs> seeing him just hang out. He like just sits out there and watches all the people um, walking and riding by. And uh, I remember like when I came back after my uh, trip to Chicago, I was like really excited to see the little black dog that lives there. I think that was actually his owner that was just walking by, so I hope that's not weird that I did that. <laughs> but maybe I'll introduce myself one day and tell him how much I appreciate his dog. He's like a essential part to this trail, <laughs> is that little black dog. Already lots of people out on the trail. It is 7.44 a.m. Everyone else is also probably out here trying to beat the heat, <laughs> get their runs in before it is sweltering hot. I know, we've been around this whole time, but... <laughs> So talking about my YouTube channel a little bit, um, the name of my YouTube channel right now is Lomas. 
which I decided to name it because I really could not think of a good name uh, when I was first making it, but I knew I wanted to start getting content out, and I thought eventually I'll come up with something better, and I just have not <laughs> in the last year. Um, the name actually comes from A Song of Ice and Fire, the Game of Thrones books by George R. R. Martin. There's like a character in the lore named Lomas Longstrider, who's kind of like a Marco Polo type character, um, goes and explores a lot of the um, world in that universe, and writes about it so that was the inspiration there but uh i would like something a little bit catchier <laughs> and maybe more descriptive i know a lot of channels who do these kinds of videos just call themselves like the walking guy or walk with me let's go for a walk or <laughs> stuff like that it's very on the nose i would like something a little bit more personal but maybe uh i don't know if you guys are watching this and you have any suggestions or um, ideas uh, for a good rebrand, then leave a comment below and let me know. Because I probably do want to update that. But Lomas is cool too. <laughs> I don't hate the name. I just want something a little bit more unique and personal to me. Right now I'm recording on my DJI Osmo Pocket camera, uh, which is really nice because it is tiny. Um, it's a lot easier to film discreetly <laughs> and it's less cumbersome carrying around but I don't like the quality quite as much as my GoPro. Um, the GoPro actually does like colors really well, like uh, making things look really vibrant and nice. Things are just a bit more muted on here, which I probably could just fix in editing if I <laughs> was better at knowing how to do that. Also, I use Shotcut, which is a free software to edit my videos, so it doesn't have the um, most advanced tools, but it allows me to export in 4K, so I use that. <laughs> um, but yeah, also everything just kind of looks like it's really close to me. I was just watching a video that I filmed a couple nights ago yesterday as I was editing it, and just like people who have like passed by, it looked like I was like getting right up against them because everything looks like it's so much closer than it is. Um, so maybe it looks like that when people are passing me on the trail like that they're literally right in front of my camera but it's just because um, it's just because things look closer than they actually are look bigger on this camera also like turning I have to be really conscious about that because it can get like really jerky using this gimbal try to make my moves really smooth. Uh, but yeah, this camera is actually really nice. And compared to GoPro, if you're considering like getting into this and like getting your first camera and like walking around and making these. Um, you know, stabilized, higher quality videos. I would recommend going with the Osmo Pocket. Um, just because GoPro kind of sucks. Um, it, like mine, I've had for, you know, a year now. And I already had to get it replaced once because it just stopped working. Like it would record like a minute and then just shut off. And now I've, I bought three batteries so I could, you know, charge them and, like, go out and, like, do a lot of videos at once. So I had four total batteries. Only one of those works. It's not the one that came with the camera either. And it's also, like, doing the same thing again where it just shuts off. Like, I can film, like, half an hour to 45 minutes, and then it'll just start overheating, even when it's not, like, too hot outside. And I just can't record anything else. Um, which, I mean, you know, when I just have one battery, I can just record about an hour anyway. 
it was just really obnoxious and I've lost so much so much footage just from the camera not working um especially like if I'm biking I just have the camera strapped onto my chest and um you know I don't notice if it goes off so I go on this like hour-long bike ride get home and realize like only the first two minutes of it recorded so that's obnoxious and GoPro has not been really nice as a company to try to get it replaced or like try to get any kind of help anyway right now we're passing under the Congress Avenue bridge which is a really special place you might hear the squeaking above me I hope that's coming through that is the sound of bats who will live up here in this bridge and every evening um, before sunset people come out here and they all camp out on the little hill back this way to go look at the bats fly out so if you're familiar with Austin all you at all you might know that bats are kind of like a mascot for the city for this reason there's so many bats living here and it's really cool watching them fly out I've seen them a number of times just riding by when it happens to be that time of the evening but there's also bats that live in caves and other areas around this area um, there's like um, some like interesting areas to explore around like Barton Creek Greenbelt where there's um, caves and cliffs and uh, cool stuff like that <laughs> um, I need to film a video out there I don't think I've done one video in the Greenbelt but it's a really awesome area that's uh, definitely a, a top 10 awesome destination to visit if you're ever coming here and you're into hiking outdoor stuff This part of the trail might be one of my least favorite parts, even though it's it's awesome. Like, look at the view of the skyline right now. That is incredible, but it sucks because it's so narrow. Um, if you're biking, you have to go so slow because it's always so congested right here. And walking, it doesn't feel like, you know, you want to stop and just like take it all in. Look at how beautiful this is. but. You feel like you're kind of blocking traffic <laughs> when you do that. So if it was just a little bit wider, this would be a really cool part of the trail. You got a lot of people out in the kayaks now. That's awesome. I'd really like to get my own paddleboard so I can go out there. I rented a paddleboard once when I was here and it was really awesome, but it's kind of expensive. And if you can buy your own, it kind of pays for itself after the first three times going out on the lake so maybe I'll make that investment yeah this trail again we got this like narrow turn right here if I was on my bike there was no way I would be able to get through there with all those people coming by and then the most annoying part is right here this uh, these boats that you can get on from this dock um, like they have like ticketing obviously and you have to pay to get on and they always set up like a little tent right here and have a line stretching right into the middle of the trail so there's just a crowd of people right here in the middle of the trail <laughs> stopping traffic um which again very annoying if you're on a bike So we're about to cross under this bridge and then enter into the Auditorium Shores Park, which is very nice. Um, big green 
flat area right in front of the long center for performing arts and you know obviously up against the lake there's a awesome dog park in auditorium shores as well this bridge that i'm passing under i think it's called the first street bridge because i believe that on the south side of the river it's called first street and then it kind of splits up into Lavaca and Guadalupe on the other side. I don't know because I actually rarely cross this bridge. There is kind of like a walking, biking path on either side, but it's mostly a bridge for motorists and I do not drive if I can avoid it. This looks really nice right now though with the the sun coming in from the east. Look at that. I love Austin. I am so glad I live here. And here we are at Auditorium Shores. That building right up there is the Long Center for Performing Arts. Um, they were just having a music festival like over there on that lawn back there um, a week ago. I'm not sure what it was, but lots of music festivals in Austin, Texas. I think they even have them like in this park as well. Um, that might be where South by Southwest is. Um, or that might be in Silliger Park. I'm not sure. That's where ACL is. I'm, I'm pretty certain. Um, over at Zilker. So I'm not sure if I'm going to make it all the way out there on this walk. But this trail does go right past there as well. So I could bike from my place in Riverside all the way over to Zilker Park. In probably about 20 minutes on this trail. Very nice. This skyscraper right there, I'll point out, um, was just a little stump when I moved here in December last year. And now it is looking like it's getting close to being complete. I don't think it's going to be done by the end of the year, but probably pretty early in uh, 2022. And I believe it is the new Google building, uh, which you might see the little Google logo on the building right next to it. Um, so it's definitely... Um, going to be a more notable skyscraper in the Austin skyline since it is kind of unique. I think it's supposed to look like a sail when it's all finished.
This is not technically an off-leash area, as you can see from the sign, but we got lots of dogs wandering around. I mean, like right up ahead, I'll, I'll go past a off-leash, um, off-leash dog park. So maybe they just wandered off from there. <laughs> But I don't super mind with the dogs as long as they're not gonna harm anybody. <laughs> we just never know. I love dogs, and that is also an amazing part of Austin is lots of people have dogs, lots of people like taking their dogs outside. There's tons of dog parks. Um, sometimes I wish I had a dog just so I could. Um, go to dog parks and play with other people's dogs. <laughs> I need more dogs in my life, basically. I, I want to enjoy dogs without the um, actual responsibility and owning one and having to take care of it. Uh, but uh, I just need to make more friends who own puppies so I can dog sit and, you know, hang out with them, live vicariously that way. <laughs> Um, this is an iconic, uh, I almost said Chicago, iconic Austin landmark, the statue of Stevie Ray Vaughan right here in front of Lady Bird Lake. Lots of people coming by, get their selfies with Stevie. Oh, <laughs> I am a bit tired right now. Um, so I apologize if I, I'm like sounding kind of out of it right now. I did not get very much sleep last night. As you know, I usually don't get up this early. I mentioned that earlier. Um, I got up at like 6.30 today and I didn't get to sleep last night until past 2 a.m., like around 2.30. So I got about four hours of sleep. And the reason for that is um, well, that's a few reasons. <laughs> so I, I was going to bed at like midnight. Already not really setting myself up for success there, but that's usually when I get to sleep. So that would have given me like, you know, six and a half hours of sleep. But uh, as I was getting into bed, I saw a roach fly from one side of my apartment to the other. I was like, oh my gosh, what even is that? Cause it looks so giant and just um, flying in the air. Pretty nasty, I went over and you know, had a little showdown with the roach <laughs> in my kitchen. I smashed it. I, um, you know, I apologize if you're the kind of person who, um, you know, will capture any critter you find in your apartment and release it into the wild. I am not that way, especially not with roaches. I will, I will crush them. They should not be in my apartment. <laughs> they should know better. Uh, I think that they are, you know, I'm fine with them. I know that they're like, mostly harmless right um but uh they you know scurry around and it really like makes me uncomfortable i wish they would just stay to themselves and like we could just live our own lives separate from each other but i had one crawl up my leg from under my desk last week it's gross um <laughs> and i've only seen three roaches since i've moved into my apartment actually in my unit but two of those have been <laughs> in the last couple weeks since I've been back so hopefully that's not um, indicative of a trend that we're gonna start seeing <laughs> I do live you know close to the river which means there is a lot a lot of insects and that is 
a downside of living here is they're everywhere. And I've kind of, you know, grown to care less about it. Like, I don't really wear insect repellent. I'm just always covered in mosquito bites, and I'm fine with that. Sometimes it's okay to be itchy. But, yeah, I don't want, don't want big bugs crawling around on me. That is not not something I am into. <laughs> um, so that happened, and I was kind of like, you know, already, uh, you know, up and awake again after I was, like, chasing this roach around my apartment. Then I was getting back in bed, turned on my lights, was like going to sleep, listening to a podcast, and my whole apartment starts shaking with the intense loud bass of my neighbor's stereo system from the other side of my wall. And this is something I deal with a lot at my apartment. This guy always blasting his music. Um, like yesterday, I had actually gone to his apartment twice earlier in the day to ask him to turn it down because it is like I want people to be able to enjoy their music and I understand that like part of what you accept when you move into a apartment where you share walls with other people is you're going to hear noises you're going to deal with um that everything that goes along with that but if it's like literally shaking my whole apartment I can't even wear earbuds or um earplugs to drown out the noise because it's shaking my whole body from the low frequency that's just uh not good it's just very disrespectful and inconsiderate especially since i always am over there asking him to turn it down anyway this was like past midnight i'm like this is not cool i I get up i put on my clothes i walk around to go ask him to turn it off and he just would not answer his door. I could see him through the window, like knocking on his window, making eye contact with him, and he was just ignoring me. Um, and there were my neighbors from other units also coming out, like, what the heck is this guy doing? Why is he playing his music so loud? Um, and this kept on going until um, almost 2 a.m. And... Uh, it sucked. <laughs> I called the police, like the non-emergency number, to be like, I don't know what else to do. This guy won't turn his music off. He won't open his door. And it's like keeping everyone in the building awake. <laughs> it's insane. Uh, eventually, he turned it off. He actually like, left his apartment, which he's done in the past. He's like, we'll get up in the middle of the night and leave. But first, he'll turn his music on. So he's gone, and his music is blasting. Um, Apparently, he's moving out soon, one of my neighbors told me. So hopefully that's true, because I'm just tired of dealing with it. Like I said, I want people to be able to enjoy. Like, he has this really nice, big stereo system, which is why the bass is so loud. Um, And, you know, he bought that. I want you to be able to, like, listen to your music and have a good time. But not at 2 in the morning. And not at the expense of everyone in the building who's trying to sleep. Um, And then after that was finally over, I had, like, I don't know, this, like, conversation with my neighbor who I don't... I just met, like, a couple weeks ago. Um, She's relatively new. Like, she's going through a lot. So she's, like, crying to me about all these things going on in her life. Um, And trying to be like a nice supportive person I don't know I'm kind of awkward in those kinds of situations sometimes um but yeah she was clearly going through it and I'm like damn I'm just exhausted and I want to sleep right now (laughs) but I'm sorry I'm here to um you know be your shoulder to cry on but now the music is off so I am going back to my apartment I'm going to sleep but we could talk about this another time I don't know, it was just a lot last night. Like, damn, I I know I'm going to be up early in the morning to come film this video. Luckily, like right now, I really don't feel that tired. I'm probably going to take a nap later on. Because I am the kind of person who cannot function when I don't get at least seven hours of sleep. I really probably need like nine, if I'm being honest. But I rarely get that. Anyway... <laughs> We are approaching what might be my favorite place in the entire city. So, get excited for that. (laughs) The Fluger Pedestrian Bridge, uh, right next to Lamar Boulevard. 
passes over Lady Bird Lake and it is so beautiful, so picturesque. And it is a place that is exclusively for pedestrians and cyclists. Yeah, here we go. Um, they actually built this bridge like, I don't know, maybe a little over a decade ago because the only way for pedestrians and cyclists to cross um, the river between First Street and Mopac all the way down past Zilker Park was on the Mar Boulevard. And there were so many people dying, getting hit by cars, and it just was not safe for cyclists and people walking to cross. Uh, that they they decided to build this bridge just for people who aren't in cars to cross over to the other side of the city. So let's check it out. Um, if you watch my videos, you've seen this place for sure. <laughs> I've made a couple of videos like specifically at this location. Actually, I think I, I did another one since I've been back and I might actually post it right before I post this video um but also like if I'm ever like on my bike or walking near here I'll always stop by and come and like record this just because it's such an amazing place to go um and right now the sun is super bright so it might be hard to see um the really cool part over here to um the right looking east here you can see it all the way over to Rainy Street. You can see basically the whole skyline. And it's incredible. And then over here, looking to the west, you got Lamar Boulevard right there. And then down this way um you got you know austin hill country you can see all the like mansions and uh homes up there in the hills where some of the richer people in austin reside and around that curve is uh the mopac expressway as well I'm hoping this is coming through well. It is um, kind of backlit right now with the sun right there. Um, but you can still tell, like, it's it's so beautiful. Um, I come here all the time. <laughs> like, I've probably been here about 75% of my days in Austin. I've visited this spot at least once. Many times I come here twice in a day if I can. <laughs> Just because it's really nice, and it's really convenient to bike to on the trail. Uh, when I worked downtown, it was, like, really close to get to as well, just coming from work. It's a nice place just to walk from most places um, around this part of the city, so... I frequently come here. 
All right, um, and you can see here we got this like spiral ramp coming up for cyclists and um, people who need ramps to get up from this side of um, Cesar Chavez right there, which is that road. Um, and then we have another ramp that goes down over to this dog park over here in that whole neighborhood, which is called the Seaholm District. You can see the Capitol building down there. I'm not sure if it's coming through that well. It might look really tiny, but yeah, there's the Capitol building back there. Um, and yeah. Let's check out this ramp real quick. I was thinking it would be nice to just keep on walking, walking out west all the way out to the expressway. Um, because the sun is coming in from the east, it would just make the lighting look better. But we're already over an hour into this walk and I kind of want to start turning around. Um, so we're going to continue on going back east now. But on this side of the river, and we'll go down these stairs right here. Um, I'm gonna mention right now, I've rec referred to this body of water as both a lake and a river <laughs> throughout this video because it is both of those things, um, which was confusing to me at first when I moved here because it really just looks like a river, right? It's just a, a long stretch of water that flows from one side to the other, but because it is um, dammed up, actually at the Longhorn Dam in Riverside, which you can see at the very beginning of this video uh, when I'm looking out to the east, um, the water doesn't really flow. It's kind of just stays in place, but it's just like a very long river-shaped lake um, that is formed by damming up the Colorado River that passes through um, Texas over here. There used to be vines that covered all of this concrete all over the place. You can kind of see a little bit of the remnants right there. Um, but when the winter storm happened in February of 2021, it killed all of them. And now those plants are gone, um, along with a lot of other um, plants that used to be here, sadly. There were some amazing, like, giant cac cactuses. Um, they used to be around and most of those perished sadly <laughs> but they've like done a good job of replanting and you saw the like palm trees up on the wooden supports earlier in the video but yeah we'll see um with climate change those once in a century winter storms might become a lot more frequent <laughs> hopefully it's not going to be an issue because the whole power grid situation that costs so much of an issue last winter has not been resolved at all. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, to my left here, looking north across Cesar Chavez, right there is the Seaholm District, um, which is a really cool neighborhood. You see that, that building right there, which people commonly refer to as the Jenga Tower because it kind of has like the uh, off-centered uh, flooring plan to it, is called the Independent actually, and it is the tallest building in Austin at the moment. And it's just an uh, upscale luxury apartment building. So actually, let's walk by here, get a little 
glimpse of these buildings. There's a really nice area around there. If you want to see more of this, you can check out my video that I actually did like specifically at the Z-Home district. But you got your Trader Joe's and there's like a bunch of other businesses, a little green area back there. And this is like the old Austin City power plant. So I think is where the name comes from. Seaholm, I'm not sure what exactly that is, is that, if that's someone's name. But uh, yeah, there's that. And then right here is the main branch of the Austin Public Library, which is an incredibly beautiful building. And the, the top corner up there, the top um, southwest or southeast corner, there's like a roof area with like a whole garden and everything you can go up and just hang out and read books totally free to the public to come in and enjoy it is one of my favorite libraries i've ever visited for sure it is awesome Got another view of the new Google building right there. This is always a fun hill to go down on your bike, but it's usually so crowded that you can't really enjoy the momentum you get from speeding down here. I'm walking right into the sun now. I apologize if it looks terrible on the video. Something I've learned since, you know, I started making these videos is when I plan out where I'm going to walk, I really have to think about the position of the sun and how that's going to affect the lighting. Because if it's the morning and I'm walking from somewhere in the west to somewhere in the east, it's just going to look bad the whole time because I'm walking right into the sun and uh, the lighting is coming from the wrong direction. So I really kind of plan things out like, okay, well, the sun is here, so I'm gonna walk from here to here so that the light is facing toward the way I'm, I'm facing. But uh, we gotta get back <laughs> to where I came from, so I gotta walk this way. I think this is gonna be the longest video I've ever uploaded to this channel because we are well over an hour, almost an hour and 15 minutes. And I only have like a handful of videos that are over an hour on my channel. So that's pretty cool, pretty special for the one year anniversary. Look at these guys rowing out here. That's gotta be a good workout. I'm 
probably just gonna keep this going up until my camera battery dies. Um, the plan is just to go um, straight this way. The trail just continues like parallel to the trail on the other side of the lake. And I'll probably cross over on the bridge at I-35 and then go back on the boardwalk from where I started out and get back home that way. So I'm not sure how far we'll get before my, my camera dies on me. It looks like we still have like a fair amount. Like I'm not low yet, but I'm definitely using more than half my battery. That is the great thing about the the Osmo Pocket camera I'm using. It has a long battery life and it's not even like super hot right now. Like my GoPro gets super hot just after like 10 minutes of using it. It's not good, especially like when I'm filming somewhere that's already hot. It just makes it worse. Let's actually check where the temperature is right now here. My phone. We got 75 degrees Fahrenheit. See later on it's gonna get up to 97. Tomorrow we have a high of 100, but then uh, later in the week it looks like it's going to get a little bit nicer. I'm glad that I missed out on, you know, July and August here in Texas because it seems like the most miserable time to be here. If you're not just like in the AC or out swimming somewhere, it's just swelteringly, what is that word, sweltering? Is that what I'm trying to say? <laughs> it's super hot, suffocating, and it's like humid also, so that is unpleasant. And I avoided most of that, but it is still like, you know, getting into late September and it's very much still summer here in Texas. But I definitely prefer hot to cold. <laughs> if I'm having to deal with something for an extended period of time, I love having four seasons. I grew up in Illinois my whole life, and I especially like love fall and spring and, and even winter. Like It's fun <laughs> having a bit of winter, but I like it for, you know, maybe a month or two, <laughs> but... It lasts almost half the year where you're just like so cold all the time. It's miserable. All the trees have lost their leaves, so it just looks gross everywhere. Um, and it's just so cold, you don't want to go outside. You know, if you're going to walk somewhere, you're just going to get like wet. And yeah, I, <laughs> I again, I like appreciate it sometimes. Like it was fun. Some parts of the winter storm actually here. Uh, I'm glad that I was able to stay with someone who did have power for most of the time so I wasn't just like freezing alone in my apartment um, but like if the power hadn't gone out that would have just been like a fun like week of snow <laughs> and having like um, you know the ability to like go and explore the city while it's snowy and if it's just like a week long of that then you know like I don't know like it's just the the length of the winters in Illinois that really got me that's why I could never live in Chicago I think or like New York City uh, at least not long term because those winters would just kill me it's just uh, not worth it half of the year is great there but the, the winter half is pretty bleak <laughs> in my opinion at least and that's why I live here, where it is very nice year-round. With the exception of <laughs> maybe a few weeks. And uh, also, also, like, the summer, as I was just saying, is super hot. But you can make it work. Like, I can deal with weather in the 90s and being outside all the time. Like, I'm, I can tolerate that better than being freezing cold.
around. <laughs> so I don't have the sun in my face. I also hate <laughs> when it is like early in the morning or late at night, or not late at night, but you know, um, close to sunset. My shadow picks up on the video a lot, <laughs> which I, I um, would like to avoid as much as possible. Like I intentionally try to shoot the the frame above my shadow, but sometimes it's just so long that it's impossible. I don't know. It's kind of like ruins the illusion of being your own point of view. Like, oh, there is a guy with a camera walking around filming this video. Like, if I'm passing by a window, I try to go at an angle so you don't just like see my direct reflection. <laughs> but you can definitely like see me in a lot of my videos where I go by reflective surfaces <laughs> if you're watching carefully enough. Yeah, but... Passing underneath Congress Avenue again up here. And there's a bit more a boardwalk in this part of the trail as well as it goes under the bridge. I don't actually come to this side of the trail as often because I live on the other side and Riverside. <clears throat> but um I don't really see people stand out here as often to look at the bats. You can hear them though. Like, I'll stop talking so you can listen again, but you can hear the little squeaking of the little bats. Also, I didn't mention it earlier when we were walking over on that side of the river, of the, the bridge, <clears throat> but it always smells very strongly of guano <laughs> underneath the bridge. And um, that's how you know that um, you're passing beneath a bat habitat. <laughs> I am trying to get all my friends from not Texas to come visit me here in Austin because it's so beautiful and I just want to share how much I love the city with all my friends. It's really incredible. My camera is probably going to die soon, it's hard to tell. <laughs> But um, it's, it's a shame. I would have liked to get a whole loop uh, and going all the way back to where we started. But probably not going to make it that far. We're just going to keep on going until I lose power. I actually brought my GoPro as well because I thought like maybe I'll want to <laughs> film more on there after this dies. Um, like if I had gone all the way down to Zilker and then I wanted to loop around that way. But um, probably not going to do that. I don't think anyone will mind watching this. I'll be surprised if you actually watched through this whole video, like, you know, didn't just like skip around or whatever, then definitely leave a comment <laughs> and let me know because uh, 
that is some dedication. This is a long video and I personally would not be able to stand hearing my own voice talking for that long. <laughs> I love that I got that guy missing the trash can twice <laughs> right now on camera. Uh, sometimes I'm like always secretly hoping that something crazy happens while I'm recording. And I just happen to get like a crime on camera or like, I don't know, something intense while I'm just recording. But usually it's just people walking around I'm living life, give me weird looks because I'm walking around with a camera. <laughs> awesome. So we're actually almost out of downtown now. That whole stretch of the trail between Fluger and here it just like sits right in front of downtown, so it's really nice if you work there you can just walk down here pretty quickly right now we're gonna turn and head south a little bit with the curve of the river and then go into the rainy street district which is these buildings right up here
I'm getting a little red battery symbol from my camera, so we might be cutting out soon, unfortunately. But well, we're gonna keep on going as long as the camera will allow. <laughs> At 92 minutes right now. Sometimes in these walks, you get people walk up behind you, or you get to uh, people on a trail, and uh, you're walking at the same exact speed. And, uh, I always like try to decide like okay I'm hearing like every word of this person's conversation because they are right next to me do I want to like slow down so they can pass me should I speed up try to pass them um, or just like stick with it and just get a glimpse into this this peep this uh <laughs> this uh person's life hear their conversation what's going on because I feel like I was right in front of that couple for so long okay we're about to die goodbye <laughs>